seeing how these uh, communities, particularly in the residential red zone areas of Christchurch, were affected, the, the level of damage, and they would have all made their livelihoods here. The homes that they built up and families that would have raised and the earthquake and then the liquefaction completely disrupted and broke the fabric of these communities. You know, for a lot of people it didn't happen once or twice. You know, for some people that happened, you know, three, three, four times and three or four different earthquakes. People had to go through, you know, repeated experiences. The most extensive liquefaction anyone's ever seen in an urban area on the planet before. You know, we just knew we had to act and, and, and do something to help. What we've learned is the important factors that determine whether or not liquefaction that is likely to occur is going to result in significant damage to the built environment or not. Any future developments in, in liquefaction prone areas, we're in a much, much better position to understand what those effects would be and how to avoid you know, those effects where you can and, and if you can't, how to mitigate those effects. These learnings can be picked up by the engineering community uh, you know, throughout the world to be able to better predict uh, the consequences of liquefaction so that appropriate decisions can be made so that more resilient communities can be built uh, throughout you know, New Zealand and internationally. We just don't want to have to put communities you know, through what these guys have been through.